What is up and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're going to look at how to find the circumference of a circle when given the radius or the diameter. Let's jump into it. Okay, first let's look at our little formula then for calculating the circumference of a circle. And we can see that we have two. We have two pi r and we have pi d. So let's see why we need two and what they basically mean. So if we look at the first example, we can see that we are given the value of the radius. The radius being the measurement from the center of the circle to the outside where it joins the circumference. So if we are given the radius, then we would use 2 pi r because what we're saying essentially is that we need 2 radius multiplied by pi. Whereas if we look at example number 3, we can see that we're not given the radius, we're given the full diameter, which is the longest chord across the center of the circle. So when we're given the diameter, we don't need to do two times radius because the diameter is already two times the radius. So we can simply just do pi d, pi times diameter. But what is pi? So we can see pi is a very important part of our formula, and pi can be defined as the ratio between the circumference and the diameter. Now there are lots of videos and lots of information that go way further into what pi is and how it's measured. We're not going to focus on that today, we're going to focus on how we use pi to calculate the circumference of a circle. So let's begin with example number one. In example number one we can see that we've been given the radius, so I'm going to use the formula for the radius, 2 pi r. Now I always like to start by putting my formula, so 2 pi r, and now I can start to input any information I know. So what I'm doing is 2 times pi times r, which in this case is 3 centimeters, so multiplied by 3. Now we can begin to calculate it, and we have two options. Our first option is to simply just input pi on our calculator, on our mathematical calculator, using the pi symbol which is by far the easiest way to do it because pi is actually a number with many, many, many decimal numbers. So to get the most accurate answer, you're going to want to use the pi function on your calculator. But if you don't have a calculator, you could use its abbreviated form of saying pi equals 3.14. That's quite a commonly accepted abbreviation of pi. But in this case, I'm going to use a calculator. So I'm doing 2 pi multiplied by 3 and I get an answer of 18.85 so the circumference for this first circle is 18.85 let's not forget our units centimeters second example again we're given the radius so I'm going to continue to use this radius formula and I'll have 2 pi r but this time r is 6 centimeters so I have 2 pi times 6. Now I can input that into my calculator and I have 2 pi times 6 and that leaves me with an answer of 37.7 and again not forgetting my units centimeters. Okay let's have a look at the third example now this time we're given the diameter not the radius so now I can use the formula for diameter which is just pi d and let's just explain that again the reason we don't need to do 2r is because the diameter is automatically 2r because this section is the same measurement as this section. So therefore this would be the radius and this would be the radius or simplified to 2r which equals the diameter. So 2r equals d. So when I'm given the full measurement of d I don't need to think about 2r. So I'm going to use the formula for diameter which is pi d, input it onto my calculator pi times 9 in this case and I get an answer of 28.27. Let's see if we could use the formula for radius with this third example but understanding that our diameter is 9 centimeters so therefore our radius must be 4.5 centimeters. So now let's do it with the radius formula 2 pi r or 2 pi times 4.5 and I get exactly the same answer 28.27 so it's just about understanding that radius is actually exactly half of diameter 
So it doesn't really matter which one we use as long as we're using the correct measurement for the radius or diameter. Let's have a final look at question four. I'm going to use the diameter formula pi d or pi times 15. And pi times 15 equals 47.12 centimeters. Let's look at what to remember. We can calculate the circumference if we have the radius or the diameter. The formula for the radius is 2 pi r. The formula for the diameter is pi d. And pi is the ratio, not ration, between the circumference and the diameter. Okay, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, think about subscribing or sharing this video with someone that you think would benefit from understanding this as well. But for now, I'm going to see you in another video, guys. Peace out. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we are looking at how to work out the area of a circle when we are given the radius. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand is what is the radius? Well, the radius of a circle is the measurement from the center point to the circumference. The circumference being the measurement around the outside or the edge of the circle. And this radius, this measurement, is going to be very handy to work out the area. Why is that? Well, because the area formula is this formula right here, and the formula is pi r squared. So let's take a moment to understand what these little parts mean. Well, pi stands for the relationship between the circumference of a circle, the measurement around the outside, and the diameter, the measurement from one edge to the other. And there are a million videos out there that could help you understand exactly where pi comes from and where that measurement is calculated. We're not going to focus on that today. We are simply going to understand that pi is a value that we're going to use as part of our formula. And we have two options when we use pi. We can either use the pi button on our calculator, which will simply look like this, or we can use the abbreviated form of 3.14 if we don't have a calculator. And 3.14 is pi to two decimal places, which is the accepted abbreviation of pi, because pi, if we were to look at it, actually would go on for loads and loads and loads of decimal places. So the abbreviated version is 3.14. And then the second part of our formula is radius. So we need to know the radius of our circle in order to work out the area. And the last part is squared. And the interesting thing about the squared is that the squared is connected to the radius not the pi radius. We'll understand more about that in a moment. So let's begin with question one. In question one, we can clearly see that our radius is 42 centimeters. And whenever I'm working out something with a formula, I like to start by putting the formula first. So I'm going to start with pi r squared. Now I'm going to input whatever I know, and I know the radius. So now I can put pi times radius, which is 42 squared. And now I'm going to simply input this into my calculator. But hold up, because there's a very important way we should enter this. If we were to enter pi times 42, get our answer, and then square it, we would end up with the wrong answer. Because remember, the squared is only connected to the 42. So we have two options. I can either square 42 first, and the answer to 42 squared is 1,764. And then I can multiply it by pi, giving me an answer of 5,541.8. Or if I wanted to be super slick with my calculator, what I could press is pi times 42. But before I press the equals button, I would press the squared button, which is the x with the little 2 hovering next to it to show that it's squared. And that would give me the same answer. But what I'll say again is what we can't press is pi times 42 equals and then square. That's really important. Check it out for yourself to see the difference of answers. Okay, so we got our first answer, 5,541.8 centimeters squared. Because what this answer is telling us is that we would need 5,541.8 square centimeters that would cover this circle. Okay, awesome. Let's move on to question two. Question two has a radius of 12 centimeters. So again, let's start with pi r squared. And I can now put in my radius, which is 12. So I'm going to put pi times 12 squared. So again, I can do it both ways. I can do 12 squared, which is 144. And then multiply that by pi, 
which gives me an answer of 452.4. Don't forget my units, centimetres squared. Okay, question three. Question three has a radius of nine centimetres. So we'll start with pi r squared, and then I've got pi times nine squared. This time on the calculator, I'm gonna try and do it all in the same sequence. So now I have to type pi times nine, but before I press my equals, I'll press the squared button. Now I can press equals, and it gives me an answer of 254.5 centimeters squared. Last but not least, I have this fourth. Hopefully you can see something different with our fourth example. We can see that we are not given the radius, we are actually given the diameter, the measurement from one edge to the other. Or the mathematical way of saying it, the shortest cord across my circle, cutting right through the middle. And we can see that this diameter is 15 centimetres. Well, what do we know about diameters and radius? Well, the radius is exactly half of the diameter. So therefore, my radius, measuring from the centre point to the outside, would be 7.5, just half of the diameter. Now I can begin, pi r squared, so therefore pi times 7.5 squared. I'm gonna do it all in the same motion again. So pi times 7.5 squared is 176.7 centimeters squared. Awesome, and there we go. Let's look at what to remember. We can calculate the area of any circle if we have either the radius or the diameter. The radius we can do straight away, but the diameter we must cut in half to give us the radius. The formula for area is pi r squared, and remembering that pi is the ratio between the circumference and the diameter. Okay, here's four questions for you to have a little go at. Try and work out the answers to these questions. Put the answers into the comment section. I'm gonna try and mark them all. Press pause on the video now. And there we go. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, think about subscribing to the channel. We make daily maths videos to help you with everything you would ever need to know about maths. Thanks very much for watching, but for now, peace out.